Hello everybody, Lurgs here, welcome to my channel and today it's the Hot Point Aquarius Tumble Dryer and what to do if all the lights are flashing on the front and it's stopped working. Or you may just have these three lights up on the front panel. So we'll be doing exactly what it says here, we're going to be emptying the water, cleaning the filter and cleaning the condenser. First thing you must do is switch it off at the mains and unplug it because we're going to be removing the condenser. But make sure you don't unplug the kettle because it's worth having a cup of tea before we get started. The water container is in the top left of the tumble dryer, just pull this out. Carry that over to a sink. And just empty that out. This one's actually not too bad, this can get really full. If it gets completely full, that will stop the tumble dryer from working. So just make sure that is completely empty. You've got a smaller hole in the corner there, just to get rid of every last drop. Now we can put that back in, it literally just slides in nice and simple, don't force it, should be very easy. Now let's check the filter, open the door just by pushing it and it pops out. Now these filters get really clogged up really quickly, you almost need to clean it after every tumble dry. Let's just remove the filter here and look at that, look how much lint and fluff has formed on that filter. So that filter is doing its job. Now the easiest way to get rid of most of this is to use your finger, just scrape it off, it should just come off kind of in a nice film. Get as much off as that as possible and you can put that straight in the dustbin. Once you've got rid of most of that you can then take your vacuum cleaner and get rid of all the smaller bits. If you've got a handheld vacuum cleaner that would be absolutely ideal. Make sure you get into all those nooks and crannies. Just be careful with that gauze, don't put too much pressure on it because you don't want that to rip. Once you've given it a vacuum, you can then run it under some cold water. This just gives it a good final clean. Don't be tempted to put this in the dishwasher, it'll be way too hot. Once you've finished running it under the cold water and it's nice and clean, make sure you dry it off properly. And then this is what it looks like after we've finished cleaning it. Before you put it back in, take a vacuum cleaner and just get rid of all the dust and dirt inside where the filter came from. Just do the best you can. If you've got a handheld vacuum cleaner, that will be better in here. Just make sure that is nice and clean. Get rid of, get rid of as much dust and fibers as possible. That's looking pretty good. Put the filter back in. The filter goes in nice and easy. Make sure it's the right way round. Now let's get access to the condenser. To do that, pull this flap out, that folds down, and the condenser is held in with these three clips. One, two, three, and then it just slides out towards you. Be careful, you might get a little bit of water out of here. Make sure you've got a sponge ready or an old rag. Again, this is full of dirt and fibers and needs a really good clean. If we have a look at inside where the condenser comes from, we've got some dust and dirt in here. So you just need to give that a good clean with a cloth. If it's dry, you can try your vacuum cleaner in there. Just get that as good as possible. Spick and span. There's a link above now about how to defrost your freezer easily in under 15 minutes. Once you've got that nice and clean, it's ready to clean the condenser unit. Now this has got a big film of dust and fibers in here. It's really important to keep this nice and clean. So the first thing you need to do is get rid of as much of this as possible before we wash it out. Otherwise, if we wash it out, there's just gonna to be too much debris in here and it's gonna go straight down the plug hole. Now access in here is pretty difficult, especially if you've got sausage fingers like me. So any tools you can get in here to scrape it out. If you turn it round, at the back here you've got more debris and fibres. Give this a good clean. Again, if you've got a small hand vacuum or wet and dry vac, that'll be perfect. Look how much 
dirt I've got out of here. Now this should be absolutely immaculate. It's a good idea to clean the condensing unit at least once a month, obviously depending on how much you use it. I've just got this old knife here that I've taken out of the garage just to scrape some of the dirt and debris off. Now this is looking much, much better already. Once you've got it as good as you can get it, take it to your shower or your sink, ideally in a shower or your bath that's got a shower hose. Put your shower head on the highest spray setting and just run the water through there just to give that a nice good clean. Whilst I'm giving this a good clean, there's a link above now about how to keep your curtains super smooth on the curtain rails. If they're really sticky, that is a top tip. Keep the plug in for the time being, just so you can remove any debris before it goes down the sink. Uh, Lurgs, I think you'll find this is a bath, not a sink. Just give it a good shake here. That is looking way better. Just leave that to dry for a little bit. If it's in the summer, it should dry nice and quickly. If not, just take a tea towel, just dry that off as much as you can. Look at that, that is a world of difference to when we took it out. Fabulous. Now I'm just gonna clean up this bath water before I take the plug out because we don't want all that going into the seat. And this condenser unit is now ready to go back in. Now it goes in at a slight angle. You've got the arrows there, so make sure it's the right way up. And as you push it in, it should just slide into place nice and easily. Once it pushes all the way home, having a bit of problem with this one, don't force it, it should just naturally go in. Come on. Whilst I'm doing that, there's a link above now about how to clean your UPVC guttering so it stays clean. There we go. Once it's all the way in, then clip it in so it's locked into place, then close the front panel. Then remember to plug the tumble dryer back in and switch it on. Now we're ready to use it in anger. So put some damp clothes in here. Then we can turn it on and start drying. No more error messages, no more flashing lights. Absolutely brilliant. Now you might still get the empty water clean filter, clean condenser lights on for a little bit until it starts and then the sensors kick in. And then it's working absolutely brilliant. Now I recommend you do basic maintenance at least once a month, depending on how much you use the tumble dryer, of course. Great stuff. Nice, dry, warm clothes. And even after that short bit of tumble dry, look how quickly the filter clogs up. So I would advise that you clean that filter every single time you use the tumble dryer and then clean the condenser unit every, oh, hello Daisy. <laughs> after you've removed all your clothes, it's a good idea just to check the drum manually, just spin it round, make sure that nothing's been left behind, any small items like handkerchiefs or other things. I hope you found that useful. Up on this side, there's a video on what to do if your dishwasher is not draining water properly. And over on this side, there's a video on how to keep your washing machine hygienically fresh. Thanks for visiting my channel, everyone. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs>